Willie D Live. It's Willie D, y'all, back with another episode of information and instructions to help you navigate through this wild, crazy, beautiful world. Got a lot to talk about, fam, including the race for the White House between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, your president. Also, Judge Mathis is trending because of his divorce and his reaction to it. Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese rivalry is heating up, fam. And what's going on with these women who are demanding that a man make at least $300,000 in order to date them? Madness. But first, I want to talk about something that's personal. Justin Riley, known by most people as B. King, he was a Houston legend, beat maker, rapper. Father, friend, son, good guy all the way around, fam. He died, and he died from health-related issues that could have possibly been avoided. I spoke to B. King about, I think it was about two weeks, maybe two, three weeks before he died. And we actually touched on his health um, journey, right? I mean, he was on the right track. He was, you know, working out. He said he was eating right. You know, he was trying. But, you know, something went wrong, fam. And, you know, he died. The um, result was pulmonary embolism colloquially known as a blood clot. On Saturday, we lost Fat Man Scoop. Fat Man Scoop died of health-related issues also. At the moment, at least right now, we don't know exactly what that is. We don't know what it was. Sheila Jackson Lee, who was a congresswoman out of Houston, she also died uh, recently of health-related issues, cancer. And so did Jacoby Jones. All of these uh, celebrities and 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 public figures who are dying of health-related issues is just a microcosm of our society at large. We got a major health problem in America, and it's time that we start paying a little bit more attention to it, fam. The most recent data indicate that 74% of adults are overweight or obese. Poor diet and physical inactivity are the main contributors, fam. We're talking about these uh, chronic health conditions that include hypertension, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, osteoporosis, and some types of cancer. The most recent data indicates that 74% of adults are overweight or obese. Poor diet and physical inactivity are the main contributors to chronic health illnesses, including cardiovascular disease, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, osteoporosis, and some types of cancer. I don't club a lot. When I do go to the club, it's usually to celebrate somebody else. If I get a homie or somebody, family member who say they're celebrating something, I try to go out and support. It saddens me when I look over and I see people just turning those bottles up 
without a care in the world. I mean, they just, ah, just having fun, just, and, you know, don't get me wrong, fam. You know, I like to have fun. But turning those bottles up, not knowing, having any idea of what that intake looks like. You don't know. You ain't got, you don't know if you drink, if you drink, you know, three shots or 20 shots. At some point, the reaper going to come knocking. The grim reaper is going to come knocking, man, and it's going to be bad in the good old U.S. of A. We're going to have a major problem. It's going to be so many young people with blown-out kidneys, blown-out livers, dying of heart disease, intestines going to be all messed up, skin going to be all messed up. Alcohol abuse contributes to all of that. It's going to be bad, fam. It's going to be really bad. We got to start paying more attention to what we put in our bodies. Do you know that human beings are the only animals that will purposely put something in their mouth and eat it, knowing that it will kill them, knowing that it will harm their bodies? We're the only species that does that. We can't keep going at this rate. Right now in hip hop especially, man, we losing a lot. Of, we losing a lot of people from health related issues. The drugs is a contributor, you know. Alcohol. Boy, that alcohol is something else. That fried food is something else. That red meat is something else. That cheese, those dairy products. I get it, fam. It's easier said than done. It's easier, it's easier to just say, hey, you should be working out than to actually go out and work out. A buddy of mine who died of obesity-related issues several years back, I was talking to him. And I asked him to come work out with me. Like, come hit the track. I'm finna go, I'm, I'm running. Now, he was a good, whoo. He must have been a good, God, 390 pounds, maybe 400 pounds, okay? Five feet six. Damn, that 400 pounds. And I told him, I said, man, I don't want nothing to happen to you, man. Come on, work out with me. And he started laughing. He was like, oh, Willie D, man, you know, you're going to probably leave me in, in, in my tracks, man. You, you know, you're going to leave me. You're going you gonna to outrun me, man. You know, you, you know, I can't run that fast. And I said, yo, brother, I said, it's not about how fast you do it as long as you do it. It's something that I learned when I was boxing. When I would train, my uncle, who was my trainer, would tell me, it ain't how fast you do it, son, as long as you do it. Because I used to be just going, going, going. He said, nah, man, don't, don't, don't trip on that. Don't trip on doing it fast. Trip on doing it right. You know? Don't trip on how fast you do it. You know, trip on getting it right. Trip on doing it. So, you know, like I said, working out is not the easiest thing to do. One of the things you can do is just Start. Just like everything in life, you start something and then next thing you know, you got it down pat. Even like when you start the first day of school, right? First day of school, whether it be middle school, high school, elementary, whatever. The first day, especially if you don't know anybody, you kind of intimidate it. And you get there, you go through the first day, you meet a couple of people, you learn a few new names. 
shit, about a good two, three weeks later, somebody new at the school, and you're showing them around. You're showing them where the classrooms are, where the gymnasium is, and all of this type of stuff, where people hang out, who the cool people are, who the bad people are, who you need to stay away from. That's how that go. Take that first step, and the next step is always easier. Not saying it won't be difficult, but it's easier. If you want to work out, you can work out. You don't have to take off running. Don't worry about those people running those laps. <laughs> Just doing like this lap. Don't worry about anybody lapping you because guess what? That was a time when somebody used to lap them, right? That was a time when they first jumped out there, especially people who had to get their weight down. That was a time when they went to the track and they was winded after walking just a few feet. They were winded. Next thing you know, they're speed walking. Next thing you know, they got a little track, they jogging. Next thing you know, they taking off. They moving. So it ain't how fast you do it as long as you do it. That, that drinking, though, fam, that drinking, we got to do something about that. We got to do something about the food situation. But I keep going back to that drinking because I see that a lot, especially with younger people. When I, when I say younger, I mean like people in their 20s and, and early 30s. It's bad with people in their late 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s. It's bad with them also. But that younger generation, oh, man, they're a fool with it. Let me tell you something, fam. When you drink too much or you drink on occasion, the immediate effects are vomiting, nausea, and hangover, right? Might get a hangover. But the long time, the long term effects, that's what gets you. That's what really gets you because that alcohol got to go somewhere. That grease that you eat got to go somewhere. Our government is not doing a good enough job at awareness, prevention, and dealing with those who poison our food supply, our food and our water supply. They're not doing a good enough job with that. In fact, they're not doing a job at all, fam. If you got some money, they'll take it. What I mean by that is lobbyists run our politicians. We've been sold out to the highest bidder. It don't matter what you want to put on the shelf. You can put it on the shelf, and they will accept it as long as you got a big enough check. They will sell us out. When you go to that supermarket, it's incumbent upon you to read those labels and to know what's in there. And also, even though you read the labels, you still got to, you know, you got to read it with a grain of salt because they could be lying. These people are allowing companies to manufacture meat. They're making up meat. They're creating, like, uh, creating chicken. They're like, man, you know what? Damn raising chickens and waiting and, and injecting them because you know at one point they was injecting them to, 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 uh, to make them, injecting them with, with, with chemicals to make them bigger or to make them have more babies and faster, faster, faster. Now they're just saying, you know what the hell with the whole chicken? We can just make a chicken. We can just create a chicken out of thin air. And they're allowing this to happen. And none of these politicians got the balls to stand up and say, not on my watch. It's sad, fam. It's a cold game, man. It's a cold game. We talk about how Jacoby Jones was only 39 years old. 39. Sheila Jackson Lee, 
who uh, passed away of pancreatic cancer was only 74. I mean, that's kind of like on the line right there, but still. If she had gotten tested sooner, perhaps, she could have lived longer. Because testing is a big deal. That's a big part of, you know, having good health. You know, making sure that you, because if you can test it, the sooner you can catch it, the better chance you have of defeating it. You know, kind of like a robber coming into your house. <laughs> you know, the sooner that you can get alerted to knowing that there is danger, that there's imminent danger, the sooner you can prepare to defend yourself and defeat that danger. If you hear that alarm going off, next thing you know, you know, first thing, what's instincts do? Grab that thing, grab that hammer. If you ain't got that, you ain't got a real piece of, Grab a real hammer, whatever. Just grab something so you can put yourself in position to defend yourself. You know, the best you know, way to, to deal with these illnesses is to not get them in the first place. Prevention. And a healthy lifestyle and physical activity goes a long way in your health journey. And that's all I'm going to say about that, fam. RIP to all that I've mentioned. Whew. And I knew all of those people. Well, let me back up. I didn't know Fat Man Scoop. Uh, I'm not sure if I ever met Fat Man Scoop, but I knew the others. And just a lot of death, fam. A lot of death surrounding health-related issues. Let's talk about Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. <sighs> y'all Trump supporters, y'all ain't gonna really like this at all. And, and let me be clear, fam. I wanna say this right off the bat. I'm not a Democrat or a Republican. I'm independent. I'm not necessarily for Kamala Harris or Donald Trump. But I subscribe to the idea of anybody but Trump. That's right, I said it. Anybody but Trump. So if it's Kamala Harris, it's Kamala Harris. Whoever it is, I'll vote for Winnie the Pooh before I vote for Donald Trump. Give me Santa Claus. Give me Speed Racer, man. Give me Racer X. I'll take Casper the Friendly Ghost. That's right, the Tooth Fairy. Man, give me Clark Kent and Superman. I'll take any one of them before I vote for Donald Trump. You got to be out your rabbit mind to think I'd ever vote for that dude. That's right, I said it. He would never, ever in a million years get my vote. More bad news for Trump supporters. Kamala Harris has surged ahead of Donald Trump 48 to 38, uh, 43 percent. That's what a new USA Today Suffolk University poll found. That ain't me. That's them. That's what they're saying. Now, the findings reflect an eight-point turnaround in the presidential race from late June, when Trump had led President Joe Biden in the survey by nearly four points. So what's fueling this turnaround? Um, the key demographics, traditionally, uh, that are crucial to the Democratic Party, that includes Hispanics, black voters, but get this, fam, the young folks like Kamala Harris more than they like Donald Trump. That ain't me, fam. That's what the polls say. That's what the polls say. The young people relate to Kamala Harris more than they relate to Donald Trump. 
check this side. This this is very disheartening, y'all y'all, and it's, that's why I want to tell y'all this. <laughs> Among those with annual incomes of less than twenty thousand dollars, in the biggest change, a three point Trump edge over Biden in June has become dun 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 a twenty three point Harris advantage over Trump in August. Wow. A three-point Trump edge has become a 23-point Harris advantage over Trump in August. Listen, Republicans, I'm going to tell y'all how y'all can... um, swing this pendulum in your favor. I'm going to give you some ideas, right? Because see, y'all stuck on the old ways and this is why y'all can't get no wins. Y'all stuck. Y'all think y'all going to bully y'all way into the White House. Y'all think y'all going to scare people into voting for Trump. People, Trump scare tactics are getting old. People kind of figuring out what he's doing. You know what? I'm just going to scare him into voting for me. I'm going to scare him into not voting for the other person. I'm going to tell him it's going to be a civil war. Yeah, you don't vote for Trump. We're going to kill everybody. They ain't going to do that. First of all, the elite won't allow that to happen because if the elite allows civil war to happen, the elite don't get to be elite anymore because they're, going to ha- they're, going to, they're not going to have anybody to look down on. The elite got to have things going a certain way in order to feel elite. And they got to be able to look down on people. So they're not going to allow that to happen. But even if it did, I wouldn't be so confident if I were you. Remember, the South was very confident before the Civil War started. By the time it ended and they were licking their wounds, they they wished that they had never called for a Civil War. They wished they had gotten in line. So typically when you're acting tough and you're being a bully and you're loud and all that type of stuff, it typically don't go the way you think it's going to go. And I'm going to tell you, any type of major real conflict, it ain't going to go like you really think it's going to go. Remember, whatever you can do to somebody, they can also do to you. That's the part you got to remember. Because I think a lot of times Trump supporters only think about what they're going to do. They only think about what they're capable of doing. They don't think about what somebody else is capable of doing, what somebody else will do to them. That's the part y'all got to think about. That's the part y'all ain't really focused on. What can be done to you? Trump, I don't think, has a chance of winning. Anything could happen, but I don't think he can do it. Republicans, if y'all really want to get a W again anytime soon. Y'all gonna have to change it up a little bit. Y'all gonna have to switch it up. Y'all gonna have to switch it up a little bit. Uh, the trip part about it is the Republicans act like they don't like black people when they vocalize it, right? They act like they really don't like black people. They don't mind a few tokens, right? But when it comes to real decisions and real access and stuff like that, they shut the door on blacks. Remember, Trump hired dozens, not at hired, but appointed dozens of federal judges. Take a while, guess how many were black? Let's see. Uh, what that look like, fam? That was a number. Zero. Zero. But you really think they for? Come on, fam. Come on. Y'all going to have to be more inclusive. Y'all think y'all going to be able to bully y'all way and bulldog y'all way into the White House. It ain't going to work like that. Y'all going to have to get rid of those, that KKK. And the Proud Boys, who y'all love so much, because y'all don't say nothing about them. Y'all ain't got no smoke for the Proud Boys. Y'all ain't got no smoke 
for, for the KKK. Y'all ain't got no smoke for those neo-Nazis. No smoke for those white nationalists. Y'all try to act like, I'm talking about now the polite ones. Y'all try to act like y'all don't really like them, but y'all don't say anything about them. Silence is consent. Meaning that if you ain't going to say nothing about it, you got you vocalizing everything else. You got something to say about everything else, but you don't say anything about them. You got some disparaging comments for everybody else, but you don't have any for them. So you don't have any for them. That means that you kind of cool with that. And this is why y'all ain't going to never get the black vote. Y'all, 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 y'all will never get a big block of the black vote. Because of your association, the way y'all make those people feel comfortable. That's the issue. That's, that is really the biggest problem because the call a strike a strike and a ball a ball, a lot of black people got conservative ways. We just ain't with the make America great again conservative ways. We ain't with the Jim Crow ways. But we got a lot of conservative ways. But y'all ain't going to be able to get that vote allowing these other people to be comfortable in your party. You'll never get that black vote allowing yourself or permitting yourself to align your values with Fox News. It ain't going to work. It's going to be an uphill battle. Let me remind y'all, until... Somebody new come along for me to even think about considering. It's anybody but Trump. Anybody but Trump. Made a T-shirt. I didn't just go buy the T-shirt. I made a T-shirt. Anybody but Trump. Y'all did this to y'all self. Because you're trying to tell me out of all the people in this country, well, out of all the intelligent people in this country, y'all couldn't find a better candidate? Y'all couldn't find a candidate that didn't have 34 felonies? I get it that he was already running by the time he got the 34 felonies, but the Democrats switched. They switched it up. They realized that they, you know, Joe Biden just wasn't going to get them across the finish line. When y'all realized Trump wasn't going to get y'all across that finish line, you should have switched it up. And you should have went with a moderate Republican. I'm probably giving y'all too much game. But you should have went with a moderate Republican. A hard-nosed, right-wing Republican is not going to get you in the White House. It's not going to happen. You're going to have to get somebody who is a little bit more along the middle. That's what you're going to have to get you if you really want that White House, if you want it back. And here's the thing, fam. I look at both parties like they're the same, really. Like, I don't see a lot of difference in both parties because when I look back at the history of America, all of the atrocities that ever happened in this country, including slavery, Jim Crow, redlining, the crack epidemic, mass incarceration, the bombing of Tulsa, Oklahoma, the bombing of other townships, thriving black townships. The Civil War all happened on either the Republicans or the Democrats watch. Everything. All of it happens on happened on the Republicans or the Democrats watch. Taking women's rights away to decide what they want to do with an unborn baby. That happened on the Republicans and the Democrats' watch. If the Democrats are in office and the Republicans push a bill through to make it happen, it happened on the Democrats' watch. And the Republicans watch it happen. Not just the Republican politicians, but the Republican constituents. They watched it happen. So if they didn't agree with it, they could have done something about it. If Black people were enslaved and the Democrats enslaved them. Why didn't the Republicans free them? They could have just freed them. They could have said, man, we're going to stop this right now. No, but what happened, 
president after president after president, Democrat and Republican, kept slavery alive and well. They're all in the same gang, fam. They're not fighting for us. Let's get this straight. They're not fighting for us. They are fighting for money, power, and influence. Those seats, whether a Democrat or a Republican fill those municipal seats, those congressional seats, they are filled by the same type of people with the same interest. The seat will the same amount of money, power, and influence, and it pays the same salary. If the Republicans can bulldoze legislation into law and require us to do something to change our behavior, they can do something to affect our livelihood. Well, that means the Democrats could too. If the Republicans enact a law, the Democrats could come back in and reverse it. If they're so adamantly against it, but why don't they do it? Because there's a wink, wink. All right, it's gonna be, I'll do this here. We're going to act like we're against it, but you know we really ain't going to be against it. But we're going to act like we're against it. Man, that's how it go, man. I know y'all don't want to hear that because some of y'all are totally sold on these parties. Y'all so, totally sold on, on identity politics. So, you know, y'all mad at me because I'm calling a strike a strike and a ball a ball and I don't trust none of them. What's happening to us as a country right now with our health, with our safety, is happening on both parties' watch. We've been talking about gun control for decades on the Democrats and the Republicans' watch. And ain't nothing changed. It's getting worse and worse. We get more police officers in every city, not just the Democrat-run cities, but the Republican-run cities. The Republican, uh, the Republican states are just as bad. The state can trump the city. They come in and take over. Y'all, we don't like how y'all running. We don't like how you're doing. The, gov gov the governor can come in and just, you know, I'm going to take over your school district because y'all don't like how you're running it. So if it's so bad, why don't they just come in and take over? Why don't they just flip it? Why don't they do something, something to change it? It seems like... We're getting more intelligence. We have more technology, more sophisticated technology. But as a society, we're going backwards. We're going forward in every major category except humanity, except quality of living. We're going backwards. We're going backwards in safety. We're going backwards in having having the money that's required to take care of our children. We're going backwards, having a decent job, being able to afford a, a, a nice house, a nice car. We're going backwards. This is happening on the Republicans and the Democrats' watch. Why do we have to pay more money to eat healthy than we do to eat bad? Seems like to me that if the government really cared about us, they would say we're going to make food, decent, good food first. That's, and that's going to be the standard. Good food would be the standard. And we'll make it at a reasonable price. It'll be a, an affordable price for all Americans. Now, if you want to eat that junk, okay, since you want to eat like that, we're going to charge you extra. 
You want something that we don't really sell in the store, we'll charge you extra. Because guess what? In other countries, you have to pay more for American food. Food that's manufactured by American companies that go on our shelves. In other countries, I know the one that I lived in, especially Azerbaijan, you have to pay extra for the junk, for the stuff that'll kill you. And the organic stuff, the good stuff, is affordable. Make it make sense, fam. That's all I'm trying to do. Make it make sense. Let's talk about Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese's rivalry. That's a big one, fam. That's a big one. I need y'all to hear me out on this now. Let me hear, hear me out. Hear me out. Well, first, let's cover this right here. So, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese had their last meeting of the season, at least in the regular season. Caitlin Clark's Indiana Fever versus Angel Reese's Chicago Sky. Caitlin Clark had a career high of 31 points, 12 assists, as the Fever beats the Sky of 100 to 81. This is despite Angel Reese setting a rookie record. Now, let me say this, fam. Both of those women are terrific ball players. They call it a rivalry, but what's crazy is that they don't even play the same position, but they call it a rivalry. This is because it goes back to their college days when Angel Reese's team beat Caitlin Clark's team. Caitlin Clark played for Iowa. Angel Reese played for LSU. I, I believe it was LSU that Angel Reese played for. But they beat him in the college championship. Now in the pros, the rivalry continues. I think that both women are very good for the sport, very good for the WNBA. They are now flying on private jets. They're getting the money. That us, at least they're getting close to the money. They're getting. They're starting to get more money for their talents, right? More people are paying attention. The ticket prices are going up. See, when them ticket prices start soaring, that's how you get to that money. That's how you can justify getting more money. I think the highest ticket price was like two thousand dollars. Before that last year, I think you could probably go. You could probably damn near sit on the front row for two hundred dollars at a WNBA game. That's over, at least for now. So both women are, women are bringing a lot to the sport. A lot of people are saying that Caitlin Clark is getting preferential treatment because she is the new darling of the WNBA. She is, let's call a strike a strike and a ball a ball. She's super, super talented but she's getting a lot of the action that she's getting because she is white. That is absolutely true. Uh, but first and foremost, she's getting the action that she's getting because she's extremely talented. But as always, just like in back in the day with boxing, if you can get you uh, a championship fighter, that's great. But if you get you a white hope, um, it's going to be more money uh, because simply because uh, America is a racist country, unlike Kamala Harris was willing to admit. It's, it is what it is. I mean, she's white. Even white people know that I'm telling the truth. They may don't like the fact that I'm saying what I'm saying, but they agree with me. They know for a fact that is true. If you're white, you're going to get more action. If you're, t if you're equally as talented as a black person, right, you're going to get more talent. You're going to get more action. Having said that, I think it's good for the sport that people are watching. It's good for the ladies that people are paying attention to them. If both both of them stay healthy, they're both are definitely going to shatter records for a long time. 
The biggest issue that I see with Caitlin Clark is her fans. Caitlin Clark's fans are her Achilles heel. Her fans are her biggest problem because Caitlin Clark has a very workmanlike mentality when she's playing ball. She don't do a whole lot of complaining. Well, she complained within the rules, you know, like you're supposed, supposed to try to act like somebody fouled you. You're supposed to act like they tried to kill you, chop you down, you know. You're supposed to do that to try to get the call, right? So I'm not mad at that. But Caitlin Clark, she don't do a lot of talk sideline talking and all that stuff where she's all in the media. She ain't talking down on people. She's just pretty just living her life and and playing ball. She's living life. She's pretty much shutting up and dribbling. That's what she's doing. It's her fans. It's the fans that's losing it. Like, they act like they ain't never had nothing before. They act like they ain't never had a star player before. I've seen her fans call. The reason why I'm calling the fans out because a lot of y'all are racist. I've seen her fans call out Angel Reese and say things like ghetto. Ghetto is code. It's a synonym for black, for some people. That's a synonym. It's the, they want to say, or the N-word. They want to say the N-word, but they know they can't say that. So they say ghetto. Yeah. So, and just recently, one of Caitlin Clark's fans posted a picture, sent, actually sent her a picture on Twitter of an image, the image of George Floyd lying on the street with Officer Derek Chauvin's knee on his neck. They took Chauvin's head off and replaced it with Caitlin's head. And they took, uh, what's her name? They took another player's, I can't remember her name, but they took her head off. I mean, they took off the head of George Floyd and put her head on. Y'all think that that's not a pattern? Y'all think that that's happenstance? No, fam. This is by design. This is what they do. You got people who don't know how to just say, play ball. May the best man win. I get it, rooting for your guy. You know, that's natural. You know, if you don't really have a dog in the fight and you got the black guy fighting the white guy, if you're black, you want the black guy to win. If you're white, you want the white guy to win. But making it a situation where as you're using racial epithets toward that competitor where you're making it to be where you're going outside of just being a fan you're going outside of just cheering for your guy that's what the problem is and that's what a lot of Caitlin Clark's fans are doing I would say the majority of Caitlin Clark fans are decent people I would say the majority are decent people. It's those same Caitlin Clark fans who are the extreme Donald Trump fans who are behaving like uncivilized mutts. That's who's doing this. That's who's behaving like that. I love watching competitors. You got some heart? Man, I don't care what your race is. I really don't care. If you cold-blooded with it, I want to see you. I want to see you at your best. And I want to see you... I want to see how you act under adversity. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I watch sports and I want to see the team 
that everybody say is so great face adversity. Sometimes I want to see them just, I want to see them just blow somebody out. I want to see how many points they can they can hit. You know, how many points they can get. If it's a football game, man, you up by eighty to nothing. I want to see you bust a hundred. I want to see if you can get to a hundred. Can you get a hundred? Get a hundred. I want to see if you can get 200. 200 to nothing, man. And I don't even want the other team to score. But then at the same time, sometimes in my mind, I'm saying, damn, they, can this other team score? How good is this team? Yeah, you got you got them beat right now. You're up, you know, uh, 100 to zero. But can you stop this last drive that they're on right now? Can you stop them? And I'm saying to the other side, and then on the other side, I'm saying to myself, get them. I, I like to see competition. I want to see competition. So I think Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark are both good for the WNBA. And I like the fact that both of them are playing in the WNBA because it makes for good competition. I want to see good competition. I watch a golf match, tennis, fencing. Yeah, I'll watch somebody play uh, pitch pennies, man, if it's competitive enough. You know? Ping pong, whatever, man, lacrosse. If it's, a, if, it's a, uh, if it's competitive, especially, if, man, everybody likes a good rivalry, right? So I think Caitlin Clark needs Angel Reese. If Caitlin Clark, if, if Angel Reese was not in the league, if she didn't have Angel Reese to play against, then they wouldn't be able to create that narrative, that rivalry uh, narrative. Every great competitor needs another great competitor to help forge their legacy. And I think Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark have that in each other but I do believe that the fans need to knock it off. The fans need to just let them do their thing because Caitlin Clark's fans, they are really making people start to hate Caitlin Clark. And Caitlin Clark do not deserve that because Caitlin Clark is a decent person. She's a decent person. And she is a very good ball player. So if the fans don't want to see people going at Caitlin Clark as much as they do, they really shouldn't be going at Angel Reese as much as they do or even going at everybody else. In the game that they played on Friday, or actually that was, yeah, that was Friday. In the game that they played on Friday, Angel Reese said that Caitlin Clark was getting favored by the referees. I didn't watch the game, so I really don't have an educated opinion about that game. But she did say that Angel, I mean, she did say that Caitlin Clark was being favored by the refs. She was getting all the calls, and when well, nobody gets all the calls, because that's too obvious. I catch a drift, I'm picking up where she's laying down. But I don't think she was getting all the calls. I don't have to watch sports to know that because even when the refs are on the take, even when they're cheating <laughs> for one team, they don't try to make it as obvious consistently, right? You, you know how they do, fam. Anyway, moving on. I wish both of them women well. Um, and again, as I said, it's good for the sport. Now let's talk about this, fam. This is something that really nags me, man. This is something that I, I every time I think we might be making some headway, I think we might be going forward. You know, I'm talking about men and women, because look, man, we need each other. No matter what y'all think, we need each other. You know, without both of us, none of us are here. <laughs> we need each other. <laughs> you know. Um, what is going on with these women who are saying that they need six figures from a man if he wants 
their attention. You want to be with me, you got you to make six figures. I saw a video of two young ladies. Let me retract. They're young, but I don't, I don't want to say that they're ladies. They're not ladies. Just women. A guy on the street asked him, how much does a guy have to make a year to date them? One said 500,000. She said 500K. And then the other said 300K. <laughs> Dude was like, 300K a year? Who makes 300K a year? She said, my boyfriend. He said, well, what does he work? And she said, Walmart. He works at Walmart. Guess what he does, fam? He's not a manager. <laughs> He's not the CEO. He works at the cash register. He's a cashier. That's what she said. That's her words. He's a cashier. 300K at Walmart as a cashier. You know what this tells me, fam? This tells me that that woman has never worked a day in her life. This tells me that that woman has no idea of the value of a dollar. That's how you know she has no idea. She's clueless. Who comes up with these numbers? Who comes up with this? Like, who, who makes up these numbers? They just said 300,000. Where does that number come from? Like, like, what is she measuring that number? Are these, like, Zimbabwe uh, notes or what? What's going on? How much a man should make a year? Enough to cover his basic needs. That's how much a man should make a year. Enough to cover his basic needs. That's at the minimum. That's the minimum, not the maximum. That is the minimum. Enough to cover his basic needs. Let me tell you something, fam. Some of these dudes out here got such low self-esteem that they'll allow themselves to get played by women like those. Even if I liked them more than anything, fam, I just couldn't allow myself to be used. Not like that. Now, let me back up. It's okay to be used. I just don't want to be misused. Everybody got to have a use. If you can't, if I can't, Use you. What I need you for. Everybody got to have a use. You got to be useful. Or else there is no use for you. Those women make it hard on other, women's who ha other women who have good intentions. I know there's a lot of good women out there, so I'm not going to fall for it. I see some of these guys out here with their blogs and saying stuff on YouTube about women and putting them all in the same category. I'm not going to do that because I do know too many good women. I know women. I know a lot of good women. Older women, younger women, and everything in between. I just know a lot of good women. And I'm so I'm not going to ever just take a brush and use a broad stroke to categorize women. I'll, I'll never do that. But I ain't no fool either. Women who behave like that, they're problematic because if a man leads with his wallet, he is going to set himself up for a lifetime of heartbreak. It's just like if you meet a woman in the strip club 
You meet a woman in a strip club, you meet a stripper in a strip club, and you in there just pulling out your money and you just steady spinning, 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 spinning. Every time she do something for you, you got to, you want to do something, you got to. If you mess around and try to make her a housewife, then your entire relationship is going to be transactional. She is going to hit you up every chance she gets. You leave with your wallet. You are going to fall behind in dignity. A lot of these women who think like those women do, here's what happens typically. They will jump out there and, 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 and just try to handle men any kind of way. And men know how these women are and what happens is that they use up the good man and then eventually he'll end up being with another woman. Meanwhile, they're over here getting ran through, but they think they're being independent and they're liberated. So they're out here getting ran through, running, just partying, da -da 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 -da, and spending money buying bags and all this kind of stuff. And, and then the time comes where now they just want to be loved. They just want a good guy. And all of these guys are nothing. Damn what they did. They don't want to talk about that. They don't want to talk about how low down and dirty they were, all of the stuff that they did. They only focus on what they didn't get because it didn't turn out like they wanted it to turn out. How much money should a man make a year? This is, this right here, fam, is the reason why there's so much mistrust. Well, it's one of the reasons because, you know, look, it's enough blame to go around on both sides. You know, men got their issues. Women got their issues. But, and I understand this, fam. I understand that, you know, relationships ain't all about love. It's just not. I know some people want to believe that, but it's not. You do have to have paper in this world. You got to have some money. But making six figures or putting a certain amount of money, like, as a criteria? So if the man makes 300000 he got to make 300000 a year. So she's saying that if he comes home one year, and he only makes $299,999.99, he got to go. That's basically what she's saying. Or, and also, if that's, all this, if that's what it's really about, the next guy who comes along who makes $301,000, he can get her. Because that's how she presents herself. That's what turns her on. That's what gets her to open her. That's what will provoke her to give you access. Fellas, don't do yourself like that, man. Don't do yourself like that. It ain't worth it, man. It's absolutely, it is absolutely not worth it. I tell you again, fam. How much money does a man need to make a year? Enough to cover his basic needs. His basic needs. No more talk.